And we are back again for another discussion. Oh, really? Yeah, this one is not uh, an interview. It's a discussion. Um, <laughs> David wanted to talk about impulse buying. Impulse doom, buying. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah, really. Ding, 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 ding. I think um, it's often a mistake. Well, hold Just on. Just right off the bat. Okay, so first... What do you consider impulse buying for the fans, for the viewers? <laughs> You're silly. Basically, I think this is something that we've all done. Most of us. Because there might be the odd person out there that never made this error. I think it's a mistake. But let's say you found out about a new comic shop or a new toy store or antique mall or there's a convention that you want to go to right and you get in the car and it's an hour and a half drive so you you're talking about a three hour round trip right you got the time you got the expense of the gas maybe you'll eat while you're out you get all that going on you get to this place you get to this show you get to this comic shop whatever and they suck <laughs> okay it happens it happens a lot it sucks and then you're there and you invested all that time money energy and effort and you're thinking to yourself I'm leaving with something <laughs> I, I, I'm leaving here I will find something mm -hmm. and you you're in a convention for example and you walk around that showroom and you have circled it and been past every table 20 times, 30 times. You've been there for four or five hours looking at the same stuff. And half the, day, half the tables have the exact same things at the same prices. And you're trying to figure out in your brain. You're basically trying to convince yourself, all right, I'm gone. I'll, maybe if I look one more time, I'll find something. Instead of just saying, you know what, this isn't going to work, and just leaving and letting it go. That's very hard for a lot of people to do. <laughs> they, they feel like they have to have something to justify the time, money, effort, and everything else that went into getting down there in the first place. Another place where impulse buying is often done is if there's a sale somewhere you got your hot cash from hot topic or your lunch money from uh, box lunch there are good examples because i've seen a lot of people fall into this trap with funko i almost did that myself at a hot topic once you got all this hot cash only it's only good it's finally good and you walk in there and you look around and you're like i don't really want any of this but you've got a coupon <laughs> You've got a coupon, so you're like, oh, man, I'm sure I can scratch something up. And you, you start picking through, and you're pulling out whole shelves, and you're pulling all the stuff off, and maybe there's something behind this row. And you keep digging and asking questions, trying to convince yourself that you can justify making a purchase with that coupon. You don't really need the coupon. You don't really need to buy anything. Oh, but you're going to because you got that coupon and you drove out there and you did whatever you were going to do and then you're sitting there with a pile of stuff that you don't need or want and I did that myself with a Hot Topic but I walked away from it I had these hot cash coupons and it was back in the days when we were more heavily into the Funko yeah, Pops Funko, yeah. and I'm sitting there and I don't know how many three or four of those stupid coupons mm -hmm. and and I'm like all right, let me see. And I'm picking through, and I'm picking through, and I'm trying to figure something out. And then I look at this little pile that I got, and I'm like, do I really want this stuff? <laughs> do I really want this stuff? Do I really need it? Or is it just because of these damn coupons? And then I'm going to buy these things, and then later on, a month from now, whatever, I'm going to be looking at it like, what the hell did I buy this for? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the other one is with being a completist on certain things. And you know I like to complete lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Most people kind of are completists. There's some people that are like, 
I don't have to have every variant. I don't have to do this and that. And that's another one that Funko can suck you down a, a deep hole on. I'm like that. I don't have to have every yeah. one. I get the ones I want and I'm fine. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you don't need to have the whole line. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if it's real expensive or it's got stuff that you don't really like. I've heard this a lot from um, Legends collectors. And I'll get into that here in a second, too, because Legends kind of really got you over the barrel. But Legends collectors or people who were um, Funko collectors, it happens a lot. Mostly modern uh, collectors, because with the vintage stuff, it is what it is. You already know what there is. There's no more. But they, they buy some figures from a line because they like the characters, and then they run into another character that's part of that line that they don't really care for, but they go ahead and buy it anyway, just so they can complete the set. And they'll and I've seen that on like um what is it, hunting videos mm -hmm. on people on, on YouTube, hunting videos or unboxing videos, and they're like, Yeah, well, you know, um, I don't really like this one, but it was on sale and I've got the other three that go with this set. You just said you don't like that one. <laughs> You just said you don't like this. Mm -hmm. I don't really care for this one, but you know, it was part of the set. No, you, what happened was you just lost another fifteen dollars yeah. on something you don't want. And I know for myself, I've done that mm -hmm. um, with the Masters of the Universe WWF crossover. I only like the uh, the 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 retro, the retro. Yeah. But I bought the entire thing, and then I sat there because I was going through some stuff, mm -hmm. and I needed space. And I'm like, I don't even know who Rey Mysterio is. <laughs> yeah, she stopped watching it. Rey, point. yeah, uh, Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. So I pulled them all out, and and you sold them on uh, eBay. Yeah. And then now they have the new Funko WWE with um. Like Hulk Hogan, Mr. T, and The Rock. Yeah. And I had bought it from Big Apple Collectible. And I wasn't going to get The Rock because I'm not a fan of The Rock. But they sold it as a bundle. But they right? sold it as a bundle. Of course. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. Then, you know, once I get it, I'm going to take The, <laughs> I'm gonna take take the, the Rock, rock out. figure yeah. out she don't care. For, it. She don't care for Dwayne Johnson. No. Mm -mm. But. So, I mean, those things happen, you know. And. You just got to be like, well, I don't want that. And it's going to take up space from something that I do want. That's yeah. how I look at it. It takes, it takes some discipline to learn to pump the brakes mm -hmm. on some of that stuff. And that is one of those places where they get you when a wave of something comes out and there's a bundle deal. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, I've got a, I'll get a better price. I'm paying more, but I'm getting a better price. <laughs> like if I only want the six figures in the bundle and I want four of them and for me to buy the four separately is going to be, you know, hypothetically speaking, is going to be like $100 to buy all six is going to be like 120 So I would be saving X amount, but I don't like the other two. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with them? And sell then, them. Then you try to sell them aftermarket and you can't even get retail for them half the time. Yeah, because the that ones happens. you don't like is the one everybody don't like. Doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So those bundle deals can corner you sometimes. Yeah. And I had brought up Marvel Legends earlier. The reason that I brought that up is because of the Build-A-Figures. Yeah. So you, they put out a wave of what, anywhere from like um, six, eight figures, whatever. And maybe you only actually want three of them. But then there's that Build-A-Figure. Wait a minute. If I want this Build-A-Figure, unless I'm just going to go aftermarket and buy it from somebody who put it together, right? The only way to get the Build-A-Figure is to buy the whole line, and then you get figures you don't want. And then you can't even sell them aftermarket in the packaging because now it's incomplete. You took the Build-A-Figure part out. <laughs> <laughs> you see how that works? It's brilliant marketing. It really is, because, man, they get the hooks in you. And the build figures I've got up here, um, I, I have pointed out the, uh, t the, the very to top, the row? top okay. row and the row right under it, the top two rows there. Yeah. It, that, well, that's um, that's Tamashi Nations yeah. over there, but the rest of those are build figures And I haven't gotten one in, like, two years. 
but every one of those I picked them up already built. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know if I if I ran across one at a convention and it was real cheap, and I was like, okay, you know what? That's that's way under retail. Yeah, why not? Because I kind of like them. But to uh, to to do it the traditional way and buy the whole set of figures, and then you've got a whole nother wave of loose figures. Maybe you like them, maybe you don't. Just to get the one build a figure and then trying to get rid of those. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. It can get complicated, but that's brilliant marketing to try to force you to buy the whole wave, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what it is. Yeah. Or um, how a lot of these companies, like you mentioned, Big Apple Collectibles, will sell an entire wave of Funko items to include the chase. Mm-hmm. And often the chase is the only thing anybody wants. Mm-hmm. So you want that chase, and it's in a chase bundle, and it's going to cost you less to buy it in that bundle with those other figures than it is to go and find the chase figure later. Mm-hmm. Um so you end up with figures you don't want to get that chase. Because a lot of Funko collectors, and you can get mad if you want to if you're a Funko collector, but it's true, are sticker chasers. Mm-hmm. Okay? You're, you're after the exclusives, the stickers, and part of the root problem with that is that you think it's going to be worth something. As opposed to getting something you actually want. Which is another problem with impulse buying. People pick something up and look at it and they say... I don't know if I want this, but you know what? These tend to go up in value a little bit. You're, you're, it, it, it's like stock market. You're gambling <laughs> when you do that. You don't know if that's going up. It could tank. And then you're stuck with something that's hard to get rid of. That happens a lot. Yeah. So any other examples of impulse? <laughs> Who are you laughing at? <laughs> She's laughing at me, folks. Uh, do you have any other example? Anything else you want to go on about impulse buying? Uh, one thing I, I figured out, especially with me, with um, impulse buying, because I have a limited line of collections. But if a different company <laughs> makes a line, sometimes I'll just buy it yeah. real quick. And then later on, I get it, and I'm like... I really didn't need another one of these. The same exact figure. Yeah, just by a different. Almost looks the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's not too much you can do with them because the figure is the fi- like the um up there behind you. You got the Ghostbusters. I mean, there's only so much you can do with them. They wear the same outfits. They got the same um, weapons or yeah. <clears throat> accessories, whatever you want to call it. Um, only difference is the size, you know, the, the scales. Um, or the level of detail. Yeah, the level of detail. Level but of it's detail. like, do you need everyone? You have a Mezco, I have a that Plasma series. Yeah, the, she's you got have, the Hasbro ones. You know, the modern Hasbro yeah, ones. Yeah, the modern Hasbro mm-hmm. ones. Um, Maddie Club came out with one. And, you know, so something new comes out, and you're like, oh, I really love this line. So you go out and then you buy it. Um, impulsively, like we we're talking about, yeah. and then you realize once you get it, it looks just like the other one, and you really can't tell the difference unless you say something, unless it's something like super unique about it. Yeah, and a lot of them don't have anything all that unique either. No, and again, it's only so much you can do with an established character because if you change it at all, then people, people are that's fuss. not what that character looks like you gotta hear all that (laughs) (laughs) people get frustrated with it because there's always going to be people nitpicking no matter what you do yeah there's no such thing as perfect in any of the collecting Mm -hmm. because nobody there's always going to be the group that's not satisfied with it this isn't how i remember it that's not my he-man that's not the he-man i grew up with yeah you know i've heard that It, it, it happens and yeah, you do have to be cautious with new lines. It's like when the G.I. Joe Classified series came out. Mm-hmm. And I actually found the original five um, at the Walmart. Yeah. You remember? All at once. All at once. Mm-hmm. They were still there. Mm-hmm. And I, I lined them up, and I'm standing there, and I'm looking at them on the shelf, and I'm thinking to myself, because I, I, I've learned to pause. <laughs> do I really want to get into this? Mm-hmm. You know, do I really want these? I ended up getting them. And 
I've kind of almost walked away from it at this point because the whole fiasco with the with the the target uh, Cobra Island has yeah. kind of ruined it now because I can't I can't ever find anything at Target. Very few people can. Something is going on with uh, Target and those GI Joe classifieds that they they don't make it out or somebody buys them all or something goes wrong. You got to up, wait at the door for the door to open. You need to wait at the back door and catch the employees sneaking out with them. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do. And I know some Target employee is going to get upset, but it's been confirmed that there are employees that do that. I don't care if it's against their policy. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Yeah. It, it Just like mean, it's yeah. against McDonald's policy for you to eat the food for free, but you still do. Yeah, they still do. Mm -hmm. they, they they sneak that stuff. It happens. Yeah. People are people. That's that's your answer to that. So I had to sit there and debate it. Do I really, how badly do I really want these while I have these sitting in front of me? Or am I going to be looking for it later? Or am I not going to care later? You, you have to ask yourself those questions. It's like when the, um, who is it that has those? Uh, Walmart, the G.I. Joe Retros. Mm -hmm. And they came out with those. And I actually saw a couple of those on the pegs. Actually, last week, I think, mm -hmm. we were in a Walmart and we saw like a half a dozen Dukes hang in there. Yeah. The new Dukes. And I'm like, do I really want to do this? Mm -hmm. Because it's a repaint of a figure they've already released. Mm -hmm. And they borrowed the card art from the original Ara line, from the original 80s line. So they just they took the nostalgia of the 80s card and combined it with uh, a figure that they put out not too long ago. I forget what the series was called. Uh, I know some the uh, one with the O ring that everybody was going on about. Well, they were complaining because that figure doesn't have an O ring. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that other series that they're copying has an O ring either. I forget what it was, what uh, the anniversary series or something. Mm -hmm. Somebody knows for sure. They can tell me in the comment section because I'm, I'm I'm getting foggy right there, but sat there and looked at them and they had the AWE striker in the box sitting down there. I like that one. Yeah, it's a nice vehicle. I'd rather have the original uh AWE striker in the box, not a remake. Mm. A remake of a remake of a remake. Basically, if you really want to get technical about it because they've done it over and over again. A lot of these um a lot of these companies are creatively bankrupt and they just keep reissuing the same stuff and with little paint differences and stuff like that. So looked at it and said, do I want to run this line down or not? Is it worth it? If I walk out of here right now and I leave these hanging here, am I going to care? And the answer was no, I'm not. So forget it. I'm already uh, halfway invested with the classifieds as it is and questioning it now because, like I said, Target kind of ruined it for me. But, um, again, I would rather deal with the vintage stuff. Mm -hmm. At least the value is concrete. You know, it, you, you pretty much have an established value with most of it. You, uh, you know what there is. You know there's no second guessing. There's nothing going to come out. <laughs> nothing new is going to come out. You, uh, they're, they're not going to pick up with Marshall Bravestar where they left off. They're not going to pick up with Battlestar Galactica, the Mattel series, right where they left off. It isn't going to happen. Whatever's from this set, that's it. Whatever's from Rock Lords, that's it. They could reissue it, but that's not the same. It's just a copy. But that's the new thing now. We just reissue. But I, I do understand that. Yeah. I honestly do. Because you make a new figure... From a, you put out a brand new cartoon, let's say a brand new one about something. You put out a figure, nobody's gonna buy it. You know, I'm I'm serious. Like look yeah, at the stuff. Kids, yeah, kids don't play with toys anymore. Right. So and they see that they were like, okay, we put out what them Brad things, them LOL surprise, or whatever mess you go in the store and you see and you look at it you're yeah. like what is and that and look at the hoops that mattel is jumping through to keep barbie alive yeah so I barbie's can, been dying for 20 years i can understand yeah. the reasoning behind reissues you're like okay we had a thing we we dropped the kids kids aren't going to buy this we're yeah. not going to even target them we're not going to even let them in our head 
is their parents that yeah. watch these shows, these TV shows, these cartoons, these whatever. That's who we're going to target. And the only way that parent is going to buy it is if it looks like it did when they were a kid. Yeah. And I totally that get that. Sense. And I totally um, understand that. Yeah, I, and, I do. And we mm -hmm. talked about that before, that essentially they're targeting Mm -hmm. the adult market specifically and they want to provide the nostalgia of that they're they've honed in on that nostalgia as a selling point we did a video on that uh, a couple of weeks back mm -hmm. about why it is that there's all these toy lines and no media to back it up mm -hmm. because they're only putting it on the shelves to satisfy our desire for nostalgia that feeling of going into a toy store and finding uh, the toys yeah like when we were kids but we're not kids anymore and the market has changed when we were kids nobody was scalping toys <laughs> you know off of uh, off of toy shelves you went to KB they had it or they didn't and if they didn't have it come back in a week or two yeah nowadays it's not like that either it's gonna be a peg warmer and nobody wants it or it, it's never there and that's just frustrating for collectors. More and more I'm hearing about collectors talking about how they're so upset, and that's another topic of discussion, they're so upset with it that not only are they not buying anymore, but they sold the ones that they had and gave up completely. I've heard that about the neck of turtles. Mm -hmm. like, I'm so disgusted with trying to find them at Target that I sold the ones that I do have and I'll never buy anything from NECA again. They take it. People are taking it that personally. Yeah. I, I gave up on Funko. I sold every Funko I had. But then, that leads back into the impulse buying uh, point of the discussion. Because if you could become that upset that you were like, you know what? I'm so pissed off at NECA now. I mean, not NECA. I'm sorry. This is Mezco's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so pissed off at, at Mezco now I'm going to box every one of these back up and sell them, and I'm never buying another Mezco again. Then what did I buy these for in the first place? Well, that's another part of impulse, because yeah. now you're impulse selling. Yeah. You got mad about something, yeah. and you, you sold it, it, and then later on, because I've heard that, especially with statue collectors, yeah. they sold a statue they had that they really liked for whatever reason. Then they regret and then they went back and bought it. Again. And of course, with a statue especially. A lot of times. It goes up. It goes up. Some some don't. Some hover yeah. around the same prices. But or still you dip. paid you paid two times. Yeah. You know, unless you, you, you sold it at a good price. Yeah, you know? but we we have heard that from statue collectors before because we watch uh, some of those reviews and we hear like they sometimes they have this thing where, oh, I've got to get the next newest thing a lot of statue collectors pre-order on impulse yeah and then they get it and they're like they do the review and they're like oh you know this isn't what i thought or it, it, you know it doesn't look happy. the same it'll as never when, look the when, same when on the computer you as, know on the computer they got the lights they got <laughs> smoke they have it's a coming professional at you. who really knows what they're doing yeah and they take those pictures and you may not be happy when you put it together yeah you put it together then, under your dim light <laughs> and it doesn't look good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have that studio lighting. <laughs> yeah. But the um, but yeah, that's a good example that we we have seen plenty of statue videos where they're like, you know, and I used to have uh, such and such, and and I sold it, and you know, to try to make some space, and now I was like, oh man, I really looking back didn't want to sell that one and i'm looking for it again but now it's like an extra 600 bucks and mm -hmm. i think that was an impulse sale yeah i mean because because it's some of uh, some of my stuff that i got tired of and i just packed it up and put mm -hmm. it away and then you know you gotta be sure yeah you pack it up you put it away mm -hmm. you forget about it then you pull it back out in six months you're like oh yeah okay then it's like like news like fresh yeah. You know, don't just sell it unless you know. Like, I knew I wanted to sell those uh, wrestler figures because I know for a yeah. fact, without a doubt, I don't know who those characters are. Sure. I've never seen them. I got it, like you said, on impulse because mm -hmm. I wanted to complete You had it. a chance to get the whole set. Yeah. 
Because they were all hanging. And on the they bed. were all hanging there. And then, in 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 um a thing that has happened to me a lot, I'll go into a store. The thing that I want is there, but the package is damaged. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I'll come back. It's never there. So now, if it's something I really want, I don't care if the package is damaged. I get it. And then, if I find it again. <laughs> And the package is good. I buy it and take back the one with the. Oh. <laughs> I mean, oh. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Oh man. But I don't leave it anymore because you yeah. never see it again. So. No. So I, you got to do it. Do it that way. I understand. Mm. And there's, so it, you know, if you're gonna get rid of a line, make sure. You really want to. Make yeah. sure you really want to get rid of it. You know, don't just. Don't just get upset and get rid of it. Don't just sit there and say, oh, well, you know, I'm so angry. Like, I'm frustrated with, like like I pointed out, uh, Target and the G.I. Joe Cobra Island because mm -hmm. I can't find them. Mm -hmm. I found one. I found one that was the roadblock, and I guess that's the one nobody wants anyway. And then somebody gave me one. Mm -hmm. They sent me, uh, they sent to the channel to our P.O. box, Firefly, as a gift to the museum, which was really cool. But, and that was from Christian. Hi, Christian. Hey, Christian. <laughs> Thank you. And a couple of other uh, classifieds that were sent to us by uh, another subscriber to the channel. And we appreciate that a lot. But I'm not going to turn around and just sell them all now because I can't find them at Target. You know, it, it's if I got real frustrated, maybe I'd pack them up, get yeah. back to it another time, and think about it. But don't just don't just trash a whole line because mm -hmm. you got frustrated. Is you, you may look back on it and be like, yeah, what would I get rid of that for? Mm -hmm. That's my thing. Pack mm -hmm. it up, get yourself a cheap tote, put it in there, pack it up nice, and put it away. And, you know, six months, a year, maybe two years, you might remember it and say, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm glad I kept this. Mm -hmm. You know, because impulse buying is just like impulse selling. You you sell something and then you regret it as soon as the car drives off. You're like, oh, why did I get rid of that? <laughs> so anything else you got on um, impulse buying that you want to cover? <laughs> you know, like I started off with is at the conventions you know if you don't just make yourself buy something to justify having gone all the way out there and we have walked out of shows remember we did that a couple at the Bridgeview in Illinois yeah I do that a lot there was a couple of times and it's like uh, I didn't have anything and you didn't have anything because we'll, we'll go to the show and check it out and film it and whatever. And you never know, right? Mm -hmm. And did you find anything? And I'm like, no. And I was like, you know what? We'll walk through one more time and then we'll just go. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to force myself to purchase something. And then get home and like, <laughs> did I really want this? No. Don't, don't do that to yourselves, guys. Mm -hmm. Don't torture yourself that way. And <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that impulse is the right instinct. But you got to be quick about it. If you're at a show, and that's another, people have asked me to do that too, talk about uh, uh, buying at shows mm -hmm. or trying to get good deals at shows. If you see something and you're thinking about it, you better be holding it. Pick it up. You know, because have you ever, you ever seen that happen to somebody or have that happen in a show? What? Where you're looking at something and you're like, huh, oh, you know, I'd really like to get that, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And then you circle around and come back and it's gone. Yeah. Or you or you're looking at it and you're talking to somebody and then someone else comes and picks it up in front of you. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh. I think I've done that a couple of <laughs> yeah, times you to gotta, some people. <laughs> if you're not sure, yeah, you have done that to a couple of people. <laughs> Pick Tell the, us you, it. you did that with that Teddy Rocks pin. <laughs> Oh, we that were lady. in Goodwill. That woman was mad. <laughs> oh, because this is the thing that I do. You oh. cannot do this at shows, but I do this in stores. Yeah. Every store I go to, and, and, and David hates it. I'll see something that I like. I put it in the cart. 
ride you know we go around the store go, he's like are you gonna get that i'm like no i'm thinking about it so let it sit in the cart <laughs> while i shop <laughs> and then you know you, you 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 ride around you look in at stuff you know you need you look at the product you look, yeah yeah and you're like yeah i really do want this so then then you buy it but if you just look at it on the shelf and you walk off when you come back to that shelf it will It'll not be, be there so you put it in your cart and while you think that's my that's my um little you could do that thing. at the show it just depends yeah okay it depends on what it is because <laughs> some things if they're out in the open mm -hmm. you can pick it up yeah if i'm talking about, about walking around oh no you ain't walking around with it <laughs> But uh, yeah, you can pick yeah, it up and if look at it. You're in. there and you pick it up, or you can ask them, "Hey, man, can I see that?" And just have it in hand. Mm -hmm. The only time that doesn't work, or is if you're already a, if it's a comic table mm -hmm. or you're at a comic show and it's a valuable book. Mm -hmm. You know, if they don't mind if you're pulling stuff out of the open bins and you got a little pile or something like that. You get your little dib pile. I got dibs on this. But if there's something behind the counter, uh, and there's an etiquette to the the comic buying, he's not going to let you uh, hold it. He's got to be sure you know what you're doing because mm -hmm. he doesn't want you to mess it up. Yeah, your so. grubby fingers. You just ate some something and you got barbecue sauce all <laughs> over your fingers trying to fit through the book. Because <laughs> some people are, are dirty. Yeah, some people are nasty. Yeah, if, but if you're at the comic show, like even if you want to check a book out, the dealer will work with you. Mm -hmm. Hey, you mind if we look through this? They may even want to turn the pages for you. Yeah. You know, so that you don't then don't mess it up or cause a problem. And I, I I get that. So that's the only exception there. But that doesn't mean you can't say, Hey, can you put that aside for me or hold this for me for a minute? You know, and or I'll be right back. I've done that too. I was like, listen, you might, could you hold on to this for me for a couple of minutes? I gotta go, you know, I wanna go check this or do this. And if they think they got a sale they'll do it for you mm -hmm. but like i said i can talk more about that in another video mm -hmm. but yeah if you if you see something you really really want get your hand on it yeah you don't have to buy it don't just buy it just because but get your hand on it and never never buy because you think it's going to go up in value i, I think that's a huge mistake that a lot of people make and that's part of impulse buying oh this is bound to uh increase in value I think you have that's bad no for collecting. Idea. It is. I don't think you should collect with the mindset that one day this figure is going to be two thousand dollars. Early retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Early retirement. I mean, I don't know. That's just me, and I might be wrong <laughs> for that. But I don't buy nothing or anything with the thought mm -hmm. of man. One day, this is going to be worth a thousand dollars. I buy it because you know I like it. A lot of that. people, a lot of people do though, be it based on the randomness of the market. Because some pe some things go up, some things don't, and that ties again. A, a greatest example I can think of is Funko. I know I pick on Funko a lot. I know, but uh, they are easy to use as examples because of the sheer amount of product that they put out mm -hmm. they put out more than anybody but uh and somehow don't make any money but yeah. <laughs> well they owe a lot that's a whole other issue we talked about that before mm -hmm. they owe everybody and their sister money so when they their when their earnings come through they don't have a lot to show for it at the uh, by the time they get all the way to their final net but People look at the history of pops from when they first started making them and they're like, wow, I can't believe that this pop is a thousand dollars. I can't believe this one is two. That's all pre, <coughs> that's all pre mass production pops. You gotta look at the history as a whole. If all of the ones that are super valuable, with the exception of a few really low numbered like convention exclusives is from before 2015 that doesn't mean the one that you bought yesterday is going to be worth a thousand dollars ever you know yeah but that makes you wonder when you look at with, with people that collect if you only buy with the mindset that this is going to be co uh valuable mm -hmm. do you like your collection do you like anything yeah you know what i mean or 
because you got this whole space you put up or you just buying it, throwing it in totes with the mindset that one day in 10 years, I'm going to pull this out and check the market and we'll see where it is. Yeah. So you don't like nothing. What do you like? You yeah. know, what, what do you really buy it for? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. But let's circle back to uh, impulse buying because that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any other <laughs> thoughts on impulse buying? No, I guess that's about it. I mean, just try to be aware of it. If that's something that you do a lot, try to discipline yourself with it. Make a little checklist for yourself that you click off in your mind when you see something. Do I really need this? Do I really like this? Make a budget. Yeah. That'll have, help have, you. Have a budget, which everybody should have some kind of a budget you're probably going to go over it anyway but everybody should have should a try. budget <laughs> yeah um if i leave this behind if i walk away and i don't get it is it really going to bother me that much you know there's there's a lot of things that you should think about don't just buy something because you feel like you need to justify your actions mm -hmm. i need to justify the fact that it took me three hours to drive to this uh, comic shop that i heard about because i heard it was so great and i got here and it's it sucks and um, I'm, I'm gonna make this trip work <laughs> i'm gonna find something no you don't have to let it go you'll be all right <laughs> you save your pennies yeah it's, take it as a learning experience you know you know not to go back to that comic shop now. <laughs> <laughs> you know you wasted your time. Yeah. <laughs> you learned something that day. But yeah, just run that slow down. Take a breath and just think about it. Do I really need this? And that's part of the artificial demand market that a lot of these companies have where they keep cranking out new lines all the time or adding things to a series. How many of these new lines do you need? How deep do you need to get into this? How much of it do you have to have? You got a whole wave that came out. Here comes another wave. Do you need it? Or I had uh, kind of thrown Mattel under the bus in a previous discussion about that. Because Mattel has what going on now. They've got Origins going. They've got the uh, Kevin Smith He's talking about the Masters of Masters the Universe. Masters of the Universe, yeah. They got the Masters of the Universe Origins. They got Kevin Smith's series, which is going to get figures. They've got the uh, He Man and the Masters of the Universe kids version cartoon mm -hmm. that's going to have figures. They got Mega Constructs, which is little tiny uh, Masters of the Universe figures. They've got those, oh, I forget what they're called. They come in the little castles. Oh, yeah, that thing. Those. And those Skeletor head things. They're still making waves of those. Mm -hmm. They've got the Mondo uh, 12 scale, which, I mean, 6 scale, which I've got down there. You know, I like the Mondo. How many do you need? That's six different waves that are going to be out of totally different figures. They look and are designed completely differently. Do you need every one of them? Do you really want them? Are you going to like get every wave and every wave and you're like five years deep into collecting them and you look at it and you're like, I don't really like this one. Mm -hmm. You did that with, uh, with the She-Ra, with the Mattel Classics. And you I got, didn't get, well, yeah, I got rid slot, of them. She bought a box lot and it had some She-Ra figures in it mm -hmm. and she didn't care for them. She wanted to just concentrate on the He-Man of the Masters of the Universe and of um, the Mattel, the Maddie Club Classics. And it's because they had to come up. What do you want to do with these? You want to just leave it like that? Do you want to expand on it and get more She-Ra figures? Or just cut it out? And she was like, you know what? I don't think I want to do the She-Ra at all. I don't like these. Mm -hmm. There you go. A lot of people having a handful of them like that in a box slot might try to expand on that and then uh, a couple of years later be like why did i buy all these for yeah because i never watched shira <laughs> growing up i mean it, it it came on i watched a couple of episodes and i remember not liking it yeah so i didn't i didn't watch it i don't really remember the show that well i probably mm -hmm. watched three episodes that's it um you watch the toys that made us and it's shira that killed the whole line <laughs> according and to then, them um <laughs> 
so so when I got it in the box, you know, in the lot, um, I just got rid of them. I didn't mm -hmm. want that. So I don't need to have every single one of them. I've got the Mondo six scales mm -hmm. that uh, that are down there, and that's enough for me. I don't need any of these new lines coming out. <laughs> I, I don't want to know. I don't need Origins. I don't need uh, Mega Constructs. Yeah. I don't need it. Yeah, I cut out. I, I I didn't get the Origins. Now I did get the vehicles. <clears throat> Like they had Adam and the Wind Raider, and they had uh, what you call them? Battle, Battle Cat. Battle Cat. Mm -hmm. I did get Battle Cat, and I am going to get Panther. Yeah. Um, other other than that, if they come out with more vehicles, I might get the vehicles. But as far as the figures, I mean, I already have the originals, the yeah. Maddie Club, the uh, Filmation ones, the Super, Super seven. 7. Super 7. It's too much. And then now I'm looking at it and like, golly, do I need the Super 7 ones? Yeah. You know? Because it's it's the same thing. Even, in, and we talked about a little bit ago, and we're getting back off topic again, but it, it, it was an impulse buy. Um, you understand why they remade this stuff, and then they package it exactly the same. They're and hoping they, you're going to make an impulse purchase. Yeah, and I did. And, um... That, you, you have to say, I mean, Super 7 did make a couple of different ones, mm -hmm. um, but then the majority of them are alike. So then you're like, do I keep these or do I just uh, get rid of them and focus on the originals? Keep the ones that are different and focus on the original ones. And that's where you can draw a line on things too, which she, you know, to credit you on that, mm -hmm. with the Origin series, you just cherry picked it. Mm -hmm. I want this one. I want that one. I'm not getting the rest of them. Yeah. You know, the heck with it. Or with the uh, Super 7 Thundercats line that's out now. Yeah. She skipped the whole first wave because it was identical to the Maddie Club wave before Maddie Club threw it out. Yeah, and then they changed the box art. Yeah, but all, that's it's fine. the box art, but the figures are almost perfectly identical, really. No, they changed it. They changed what to, the figures? No, the box. Because when it when they initially showed it, the box looked exactly like the um, Maddie Club. Mm -hmm. But when it actually came out, the box was different. Yeah, but I mean the figures themselves. Oh yeah, the figures itself is the same. Very yeah. similar. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I didn't get that one. So she was like, "Well, you know, I've already got the whole Maddie wave. Why am I going to buy the Super Seven wave? And the only difference, primarily, is going to be the box design. Mm -hmm. it, you don't have to do it. Yeah." So, I mean, that's a good example of, like, sitting there and thinking about it and saying, you know what, I don't really need this. Yeah, and then it's a way, you know, if you do that, and, and, and especially if you tie it on space, you, th you think of it that yeah. way, and don't impulse sell, pack up the duplicate. well, they're not duplicates, but pack up the ones Extras. that you, that's questionable, mm -hmm. set it aside. Free wait. up the space. Put something else up. See how it goes. Yeah, and because we had talked, we had talked about that before. Uh, you know, put it away in the totes. Half of you guys out there know you're living out of totes anyways if you collect it. <laughs> I've been there myself. When I was still living in Boston, I think like eighty percent of my collection was in freaking totes. Yeah. You know, it, it it happens. We're fortunate enough that we had the space that we could put a lot out. And we still have some things put up. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that happens to most collectors. We don't all have an unlimited amount of space to work with. Buy a so, whole house only. <laughs> oh, you mean like that uh, Aliens and Predator collector? Oh, God, yeah. He, the whole house, every room, every floor. Every room. Except for like the kitchen and the bathroom. Yes. Was, uh, was Alien and Predator, but that was an impressive. Yeah, he set. had a lot. He, he had uh, props from the movie. He had yeah. all sorts of things. Like the full ones, uh, uh, one to one scale. It was, uh, yeah, it was like a museum uh, yeah. that you could walk in there. But yeah, the mm. kitchen and bathroom were empty. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But every, the whole and house. Some, for some people, that's, that's fine. I mean, as long as you don't have a bunch of pets, I think you'll be okay. Yeah. Put it in your living room. Nobody yeah. comes over anyway. Yeah. You tell the um, realtor, oh, we want to entertain. Nobody ever comes to your house. Yeah, I know. If you uh, if you have a massive collection, you're probably better off anyways not having too many people come by. Yeah, you pray they don't come by. When I did the stolen collection video a while back, uh, a bunch of the responses I got were from people who said that they had lost a piece of this and a piece of that by somebody 
visiting. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody come by and something would be suddenly missing. Yeah, it walks off, it grow late. Friend you've had for 20 years suddenly decided to steal a piece of this and a piece of that. And you're like, what the? Or some relative who you discover had like a crack problem and things are missing. <laughs> so I had one guy who did respond that said that they had a, a drug addict relative who ripped them off. You know? And you know crackheads sell you everything for like $5. Yeah, I know. I need to meet that crackhead. Oh, come on. I wouldn't want I wouldn't <laughs> Like you wouldn't. Somebody there. come, a crackhead come to you and they have eight totes full of Star Wars and G.I. Joe from 19, whenever it first came out. <laughs> and they say, man, you give me $100, you can have all seven totes. You wouldn't buy those totes? I don't See? know. Oh God! I really yeah, don't yeah, know. I, don't I would hear. You. Here's the. Mm. That, I know that's the ethical spinoff Whatever. question. Whatever. I true, would buy those totes. The true answer is I would like to think that I had enough ethics to walk away, but you can't tell for sure until you're in the moment, and I've actually seen that happen. What I, kind of ethics? The man gonna yeah. get that money. He's gonna smoke that crap. Yeah, but then you don't have to be the one who stole it. And you don't have to deal with it when they find out when they catch him and they find out where it ended up. He and don't they know. He's take your cracked stuff. out. And Listen met to the him discussion that just turned into. What are you I doing? I know. Let's circle back. <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> what is it with you and circle back now? Because that lady, <laughs> <laughs> that one lady, that redhead. Let's circle I've back. I'll it. circle back to you on yeah, that. I know. Circle back. Can so I'm going to start using that. Can you give me your opinion on infinity? I'll have yeah, to circle, circle back, back to you, to you. on that subject. Yeah, exactly. the, um, I, I, I wanted to point out, though, I did know somebody who did that. That uh, I, It was a card dealer and his, named Kenny that I used to know when I was living in Boston, when I was still working with Great Eastern Conventions, and he had somebody who come who come into his shop who um, and it w- who was obviously strung out, and he had a box full of stuff of trading cards, and they were pretty freaking valuable. See, and he wanted I don't remember how much, but it was so drastically below the value, and Kenny was looking at it and he asked him, "Where'd you get these?" And he was like. You know, I just had them or whatever, whatever excuse. And Kenny, t- Kenny told him to get out. He was like, "I'm not buying these from you. You stole them. Get the hell out of here." So, there are people who will put their foot down on that, and I, I commend Kenny for having that, uh, for <laughs> having <laughs> for having that integrity. There are people that will reject that. I would hope that I would have that integrity <laughs> in that situation. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I hope you would do. Yay! Uh, applause, I'm seriously, applause. that that's inspiring. He was like, that, that guy's like a that guy's a junkie or something. He stole that from somewhere. I don't want to be the one. I know, cause it, it could be your collection he stole. Yeah, it could happen to you one day, mm-hmm. and then you find out that somebody sold uh, your life for a <laughs> hundred dollars. Like, and keep in mind that happened to me. Yeah, it did. So, so I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to do that to someone else. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> that's where it goes <laughs> okay so back to um uh the collection and you circle back to it yeah we trying to circle back here and then this whole come on for man quite a, for quite a while um impulse, impulse buying. buying anything else you want to talk about with <laughs> i guess i guess that'll do it like i said guys don't do it to yourself don't buy stuff you're going to regret later. Think about it first. Don't just get it to satisfy the time, money, effort you put into getting somewhere. Don't just buy it on a whim. Often you end up regretting that. So think about it first. Slow down. Take a breath and enjoy your hobby. <laughs>